Candice, welcome to the cave. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me today. Uh, exciting time. Exciting time. We just had uh, the season premiere last week of uh, Kevin Kevin Kenneth himself. I recently mm-hmm. had Alex on too on the show. Oh, you did? He's he's yeah. great. He's great. So uh, yeah, but how's this whole ride been for you so far? I mean, I know I want to jump into the show a little bit later on, but I just want to know really quick. I mean, it's been great. I it's it's been really um, kind of an easy ride because fortunately we got to start this project at, like in the middle of COVID. So I think everybody was just really happy to be working season one, and everyone was really grateful for being there. And then when we found out we got picked up for season two, we were just like ready to already to get back to work and and play and see where the story was going to go so Mm. um it's been really exciting i've gotten to have a little bit more exposure and um, some opportunities coming in i just got back from kentucky shooting from shooting a film and so you know i I, i'm i'm excited that i have this show in my back pocket to have all the experience that i've had with it and um see where else it's going to take me on this crazy journey we call acting that's right so i was doing a little research on you uh i was trying to like what made you get into the industry? I saw you start off a little dance. Is my correct? Theater, dance around there? Yeah, I started as a dancer back when I was in high school, uh, which transpired into college. I was also I was also on a scholarship for a sport at NYU. So I did see you that. Know, I, you know, when you're at school, you know, you want to keep your grade point average up in order to keep your scholarship. But I also needed mm. to work to make money. So the 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 most logical thing in New York was like, let me just audition for things that I could get my hands on. So the dance world was very much um, a fluke for me because I was never a trained dancer, but I I had some really cool opportunities where I got to work with some some great people and friends who helped guide me in the right direction. And uh, I had an extensive dance career and then that just transpired into film and TV and commercial and uh, independent films. And then it kind of just worked its way into film and television. And uh, a couple of years back did La La Land, which is one of the well, you know things that I'm really proud of because it's an iconic scene in the beginning of the movie. And um, yeah, and then it's just been, it's been acting from now on and, and hopefully maybe this will get me to Broadway soon one day, who knows? Is that, the, is that the goal, Broadway? I mean, I would love to do something on Broadway as a singer, dancer, actress, like, you know, yeah. finally have the the platform to do all the things that I love and, and do it in the right space, you know, that'd be awesome. What, uh, is there somebody that you look up look, look up to in the industry that kind of like pushes you more and more into this? Like you, is there like, I mentioned goals. You said Broadway. Is there anybody that you look up to, try to study under, watch their sh- movies or shows? It's funny. I was just talking about this with my boyfriend yesterday. Um, I mean, there's tons of people, of course. There's different, you know, uh, there's men, there's female. But I was saying to him, I was like, you know, I really want, like, Chiwa Till for his career. Like, he gets to do really interesting projects. And, like, he's a great actor. And, you know, but, like, he's also kind of on the back burner. And he doesn't, like, do, you know, overexpose himself and... And there's just like a wide range of, and he's just so grounded and he's just so present that it's, that's the kind of work that I want to do. I, I I like to watch actors that um, connect on a human level. That's really my kind of, my, um, my inspiration. Um, you know, movies like Nomadland, movies like mm-hmm. August Osage County, movies that have to do with uh, human contact, connection, and the, and the river that runs deep within us, you know, that's kind of the stuff that inspires me. What's the dream role? Do you have like a dream role you kind of hope you get your hands on to someday? Um, I mean, there's so many things that I would love to do. I would love to do like some sort of Marvel superhero kind of, you know, dark character. Um, mm, the villain. I mean, yeah, like like a villainess, you know, yeah. um, that you love to hate. As, you know, the movie Joker with uh, Joaquin was out a couple of years ago. And that was just one of those films where you're like, Oh yeah, it's like an origin story. He gets to play really w- weird in it, and like also mm. it's a great movie and it's a great story. So something like that would be cool. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna not ask for that. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So Ke- so Kevin Kenneth himself, like I guess I mentioned earlier, uh, season two just premiered last week. Did you know you were gonna come back for a second season? Did we you like had? Because had- at first, I when I was reading you, you were just you were brought on near the middle of the first season. But you weren't, wasn't 100% you were coming back for the second season. So no, uh, well, when when I first booked the job in the, you know, in the knowing of possibly going back for season two, I knew I was going to be a series regular if, if it got picked up for a okay. second. So it was great because, you know, we had some time off and we were waiting to see if it got picked up or not. And then once that mm-hmm. happened, it was just like, you know, I could breathe again. So it was a good, <laughs> it was a good treat and I was really excited about it. So uh, did you originally audition for Tammy? Say again? 
Did you originally audition for Tammy? I did. I did. Yeah. And she originally had a Boston accent, but then that went away, which was a lot easier for me. So. But you couldn't do you couldn't do the Boston accent like Alex. I could. I could. Well, he's gonna. <laughs> he's, really, he's really good at that. I just think that um, it wasn't in my wheelhouse as much as it was for those guys. It was mm. would have definitely been a challenge, and I would be up for it. But I think also from where Tammy comes from she would have probably had to prove that she didn't keep that accent and lost it in her, you know, in her quest for rising to the top of this police force with a bunch of men, proving herself as a woman and as an educated woman on top of that as well. So, mm. you know, we stuck with, you, the, with the natural accent. When you booked the role now, how did you prepare to play this role? Um, I called my girlfriend who it was from Boston That's and awesome. I basically was like, can you like repeat some of these lines for me so I can just have it in my, my, you know, my head, what I, what, what Tammy would sound like. And she was like, yeah, fine, great. And it was, you know, it was a whirlwind of, of a day because I was working on another project and I, I literally had like one day to put a bunch of auditions on tape. Mm. And so it was more like, I wanted to do a good job with everything. And I just like kind of let it release to the universe and whatever was going to happen was going to happen. So mm. I got the phone call like two days later that they wanted the chemistry test for the show. And I was like, okay great you know and it all just worked out really well it was like it was there was a lot of chaos before it happened but it just yeah. kind of like, like a roller coaster at the end it was all worth it so yeah were you surprised the way season one was left off um well i i knew how it was gonna go because i got the scripts yeah. ahead of time. but no i mean i feel like that's the way it should have left off because now we have a whole new journey to go on mm. it's gonna be really interesting how this season kind of throws you some some um you know, curveballs. It's gonna be interesting. Well, I had the opportunity to watch season two. Now uh, we can talk a little spoilers. Uh, season two, the way it starts off, um, were you uh, the way? Yeah, the way the season started off. Were you like when you read the scripts? What was going through your mind the way this the the season was taken off? You know, you you can't really. It's hard to predict because one, the scripts do change as we go. You know, to kind of uh, tighten up the story. But you know, for me, I like to be on a journey with a show like this reading we, we did table reads once a week okay. so yeah. like we couldn't jump the gun too much and the thing that I think is interesting for actors on a on a project like that is that you have to build the character in order for the story to keep flowing into the next episode mm -hmm. so we were kind of sometimes just going like what what's going to happen we were on the ride at the same time as you know as the audience would be watching it we had that same journey or at least I did what are, you, what are you hoping for with the, the fans that return back to watch this? Because this, it's got a good following. If you go like on Reddit and Facebook, there's groups and everything. Like, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, it's it's exciting. I think it's definitely a cult classic of a show. Um, I think that the audience is going to be pleasantly surprised on how season two ends. I think there's um, an interesting twist that the creators of the show mm -hmm. are trying to convey, um, shine some light on some things. And um you know, there's a lot of growth. Each character has a lot of growth in, in whatever direction they needed to go in is kind of, you know, where, I, I don't want to give too much away, but like, right. um, you know, everybody has some sort of transformation, some sort of, um, you know, eye-opening experience. And I and think see, that that's important. Uh, see, we see your character mostly in the dark portion also. We don't see you in like in the sitcom portion. Right, right. First season, I got to play a little bit more in the multicam. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of episodes, there's a couple of scenes where I can, I'm in multicam this, and it's just, it's just funny. It's fun to be in multicam and like, I'm usually more of the straight actress kind of thing. And yeah. so it's great to be in a field where I get to learn and watch these players do some really great things. The comedic timing is, 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 is on point. And, um, yeah, it's fun. It's fun to like, you know, laugh. Right. You know, how, so. How, how, like, what's the challenge between like doing the multi part and then the dark portion, like to prepare for those scenes? I think it's more about the timing. Okay. I think because we do, we did have a live audience. So yeah. there, it, there's timing in the joke, you know, there's timing in letting each actor finish their thought, let it land and then see where it goes. Um, also the cool thing about multicam is that, you know, whoever's directing the episode or wrote that, 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 uh, that episode, they throw, they throw new things at us. So we get to mm. play on set at the same time too. Yeah. So you have to bring the next joke to life, which is really cool too. You have to kind of be in the moment with that. In single cam, you know, we're more prepped for like the intensity, the human connection. It's more about, you know, um, it, really we're out in the cold a lot when it's single cam. Yeah. So it's mostly about like getting the scene done. So we're not freezing for the rest of the day. Mm. Um, 
but yeah, so that's, the, I think the, the difference is just the, the way you go, the way we lead it. You know, we mm -hmm. know that in single, we're allowed to bring a little bit more drama, a little bit more heat, a little bit more, you know, severity, if you will. And then mm -hmm. when we go to be multicam, we get to have a little bit more room to grow, a little bit more playfulness. And, um, you know, there's sometimes a, a giggle fest on the, on the set, but it's, that's, that's the part that we love, you know, that's right. behind the scenes stuff. And we can see like uh, throughout the season, like when, when your scenes, you're like very like straightforward with your character, very serious, very straightforward. Yes. Tammy is very that I can, I can relate. <laughs> now uh, we also know like, you know, um, Tammy has a relationship with Patty. How do you like describe now that, that relationship and what goes on through like season two? It's really, it's complicated because you have these two women um, who are very, very, very different, but they, they, they really need each other in order to expand. I think Tammy, you know, uh, puts up with a lot of what Patty puts her through because she's used to proving herself. She's used to, you know, trying to work through the difficult times, Tammy. She's used to yeah. the struggle and Patty, needs Tammy in order to expand her horizon on maybe the way she dresses or new experiences. And it's just, you know, it's complicated because um, as in life, relationships are complicated, right? We, right. you know, some you, you might watch the show and go, they would never be together. They're so extremely different, but there was, there's an underlying need that I think all the women in the show, actually, mm. they have this underlying need for um, being heard, being understood and finding some sort of like connection to know that they're not alone, you know, in, in this world that they've, they've created almost for themselves at the same time. So. Would you say your character changed a lot from season one to season two? I, I would say so. Yeah. yeah. I say how, you're going to see a, you're gonna see a soft you side of Tammy. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know. Well, she cares about Patty. You can see it a couple of the episodes down the road. It's, it, it, it gets warmer. And mm -hmm. I think that we, we really liked exploring that, that uh, arc with us. Um, but I don't want, I don't want to, you have to give up yeah, too much. Just, right. stick, stick around and then you'll see that, right. you know, Tammy does change. She changes in a big way towards the end of the season, but, um, mm. yeah, it's all for the best. Right. So the show's yeah. called Kevin Kadef himself. Kevin's played by Eric. How, uh, Kevin's personality, how much like he makes like the other characters, like not drown, but what's the word? Like he pretty much like everybody else feels down when they have to connect with this guy. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's the, the, you know, that's the point. It's like, if that person, if, you know, Kevin's character was someone living in the real world, yeah. that you wouldn't really want to be around him. It's funny right. to look at, like, it's funny when it's, you know, satired and it's funny when it's, it's pushed to the extreme, but imagine that was your friend on a regular basis. Mm be like this person is exhausting right right you know and 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 kind of a narcissist not kind of a narcissist he is a narcissist yeah. um you know and and we laugh it off we're taught to laugh it off right yeah right but there is obviously a change that will happen for him as well we'll see certain things that we weren't expecting to see um but yeah like we're taught to laugh it off for a long time until it just wears you thin and i think that that towards that once once you stay on the journey with allison you're gonna go Oh yeah, if that was my husband. I'd want out too. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, and you know, in in the in the writing of the of the the series, the season, it's hard for people to change. I think mm. in the real world, it's really hard for people to change. So we'll see. We'll see how they do and why they do. Mm. And you mentioned exhausting. You know, like the, like you said, in real life, if you're dealing with somebody that's like that, you don't even want to talk to them or hang out with them anymore. You want to just be done with them and. Totally. Avoid the drama, like they say. Totally, totally, totally. Yeah. But it's funny because Eric, as a person, he's like the nicest person on the planet. So. Right, right. Yeah, he did a great is job. There, is there anybody from the cast members that you kind of wish you had more scenes with? I wish I had more scenes with, with scenes with Jamie, Jamie Denbo. She's the blonde. Uh, she's uh, Chuck's wife. And yeah. she, you know, yeah, she's just so funny. And she's she's just a pleasure to be around. Um and yeah, I mean, I would have loved to have more scenes with her, but I think I would have loved to have more scenes with some of the guys too. Mm. You know, I've had some, I have some fun moments, but like more with my, with the guys. Yeah. Especially Alex, Alex, like, like he loves the improv. He's so good. He's so great. He's, that's where he comes from though. That's his background. Right. right. Yeah. Now, uh, Kevin Kev himself, season two, final season, AMC. What's next for you now? Any other projects you're allowed to tell us about? 
I just got back from Kentucky. I was shooting a horror film. I got to keep that disclosed until they release the announcement, right. uh, which I think they're going to be doing this week. And um, currently I'm auditioning for some new stuff. See what happens down the pike. And then also I am the voice of Comcast. So I'll be working for them as well for the next couple of weeks. And, and yeah, like I'm just, I'm looking forward to a little bit. I just got back to Los Angeles. I've been out of town for a while. So right. I'm excited to be back home, have my feet planted here, see mm -hmm. what comes. Um, and I always like, I trust, I trust the journey when it comes to my, my team and what I manifest and whatever's meant to be mine is going to be mine. So that's great. Now yeah. for the viewers and the listeners that tuned to this interview for your journey, how can they follow you on social media? Um, you can follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram at candy Coke. It's one word. Um, it's a black and white picture with me and my dog. And I am on Facebook, but I hardly am on, I'm, I'm really bad at social media. I, I, I try to tweet. I was going to write a twit tweet the other day going, do people even tweet anymore? Like, I don't even, you know, like <laughs> I'm sure they do, but I, I have to be better at that. So Instagram would be the way to follow me. Um, I'm currently revamping my website. That's the dog next door. Um, yeah, I, yeah, that's the best what, way. Uh, what's your website? Just in case people want to look it up. Right now it's Candy's Coke 326. You could, if you Google my name, if you Google my name, it's like, you know, you'll find the website. I think one of the, a couple bars down. I want to th thank you for giving me a few minutes today. This was a great chat and I can't wait for the, everybody to check it out. I can't wait to hear the feedback. So I look forward to Perfect. it. Perfect. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it.